So at this point, we've uh, started our path to uh, saving data into this database. If it works, you'll see that once you add a CRN uh, and a class and so forth, data, it is saving, it is giving some console output, some positive result or negative result, and it's displaying something on screen. Well, let's do this. Go back to, if you're not already in the browser, go ahead and go back to, fire, uh, back to Chrome. Go back to Resources tab. And now that we've been playing with adding a bunch of data, let's, uh, let's see what this tab looks like. So go back to Resources. You should have your SDCE Classes database. Open that up. And then let's go look at By Sequence. So look at this. Now, here's the data I've added so far to my database in JSON format. Uh, zero to whatever in key. So it's counting from the zeroth item in the database, counting from zero as, as normal in, in computer counting. And so here's the very first record, and it shows it. Um, we stretch this out. It shows it here, and uh, there's my data. The title, if you open this up, if it's closed, if you open it, there's the title, what I wrote there, there's the inst. It added uh, the revision, the document revision number 1-5FC. Remember I mentioned that a while ago. Uh, it looks, it shows it in another way here too, and then instant title um, so, let's stretch it out over here. Uh, there, this shows it as the ID and the revision. There's my ID, 787, and then the, and then the revision. So that's why when I'm trying to resave that same data, uh, it gives me a conflict. So I'm seeing that I've got a class called you know, uh, 999. If I try to do class 999 again, uh, this will be Japanese 101 with Instructor Smith. And I try to save that, this gives me an error because I've got something in my database. I can see it here. There's my pouch database. By sequence, I'm seeing I've got something with 999. I can look at the data in different ways also. Let's see. Uh, Document store. Here's another kind of useful way to look at it under document store. Here it shows it to you in terms of the IDs. So I've got something with ID 1 and 999. There it is again. There's the key, there's the value. The value is all in here. So it shows it to us in different ways. By sequence, document store, and it might show in other <coughs> in other ways also. Um, if I add new data, let's say class uh, zero 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 save, it gave me class save. This doesn't update automatically until you hit this little refresh button down here. So you might have to refresh the whole window, or you can press that refresh button. And now I've got a brand new item here, zero. We also have this clear button, because I've been putting in a bunch of data, and I've been uh, just putting in gibberish here and there. But if I you know, if I clear this stuff out, I can start over. I wouldn't hit that just yet, but you, you can clear the data. Because this is sort of like local storage. Remember the HTML5 local storage object, which are, you know, permanent cookies, permanent data we're saving. This pouch works on that. This is because it's going to be permanent. If I close the whole browser and open it up again, if I close everything and open it again, it'll still be there. That data is being saved rather permanently to my web browser. Question? What do you do with um, number and key? How do you use that? 
Well, the key is the is the ID, uh, and the number is just that it's going to show it to you. It, it's it's going to show it to you in some sequence. Well, the, the key looks like it. Well, the number starts with zero. The key starts with one. You can just add R so does that mean that um, that that's like the position of the array of the database? Basically, yes, it's the position within the, if you want to think about it as an array, that, yeah, it's the position within the series of data, it's serialized data, so it's the zeroth position in our string of data. Um, in the by sequence section? It's different. Yeah, it's just that um, two ways to display the same thing, if we want to pull the data to display based on the, you know, the, the, I forget the exact name of that column, but by that number in the sequence of data, we can use zero. Or if you want to refer to it in pouches, new, you know, pouches sequence, it's one, it's key one, it's the first thing, which is zero on the array index. Do we know, do we know exactly file the data style? Like the exact file? What the file name? It's, uh, I would need to look it up again to remind me, but yes, it's somewhere in, you know, the user folder, inside of the, the local data folder. It's somewhere deep inside the web browser's cache, somewhere. So we can find it, but it's actually not really saved as a really human-readable file. We can read it if we've got Notepad++ and such, but it's not an actual kind of file that then we can move from this folder to another. But it is saved internally into the system. Yes? So if you cleared your, uh, your memory, I don't have a memory, but your uh, cookies and things, your browser tool, does that erase this file? Yes. There is. There are various ways to fully delete it, but uh, what I was saying earlier was that yes, it's it's pretty permanent based on the browser. But except for that, if we do clean out our cookies, if we reset the browser, we can delete all of that because that is internal to the web browser. So it is deletable that way. Uh, it is deletable for us here that we've got deep freeze. So once we restart the computer, it's gone. And then when we get it uh, over to our actual app on our device, it'll be permanent as long as we have the app installed. What if we uninstall the app, reinstall the app? It's gone. What if we go in, what if we don't delete the app, but we go into the settings and, and say de clear cache of the app? It could delete it there too. So it's it's pretty permanent except when it's not. When we go out of our way to really delete it, which is of course doable. Even with like uh, you know Instagram and all of that, it it tells you, are you sure you want to delete Instagram? You're gonna you're gonna lose things. Now, Instagram, of course, has a server infrastructure where it's not really deleted. It's off on the cloud behind, you know, encryption and all of that. Um, our project could do that, too, at some point if it gets saved over to the cloud. Right now, it's pretty sturdy. It's getting saved permanently to our web browser. Uh, so, yes? Did you, did you say that when you updated not yet. Okay. Not yet, unfortunately. Okay. So if I've got CRN 0 and it's currently saved, my database shows I've got the object 0, 0, 0. I'm trying to update class 0 and call it, you know, Spanish 101 with Instructor Smith. Save that class. Nope, that's an error. We have a way. We'll see that we can update our data, of course, but we need a little bit more setup here because we get this conflict. You're trying to update the same data. We have to deal with that revision, with that revision string. So if this worked and I did save some data, saved class, I want to clear those fields. I want to do other things. We'll work on that. Oh, and then one more thing here. Uh, let's say I wanted to just for fun, uh, let me show you something interesting and powerful here. Uh, I'm getting this uh, error, and I and I wrote this simple human readable error, but my console is telling me this, this this big result here. I can display this stuff on screen. I can display this message on screen here. Let's try that just to 
show you this concept. Let's go back to our code. Uh, let's look at the the error. Let's look at else, which is our error. Right now on screen, it is simply saying error. Let's delete. Let's delete that. I no longer want it to display error. I want it to display the message that I'm getting in the console. Error dot message. The error variable, the error object that it's getting called, that it's getting kicked back to the callback, it contains those fields. The message field, the status field, the name field, the message field, and we can access all of those with dot the name of that field. So now without quotes, on screen if I force an error, it will display that message on screen to the user. Again, it's not a very user-friendly message, that's why we're looking at it in the console. But I'm showing you this because many times this is a paradigm we see over and over and over, not just on PouchDB, but on everything basically on, related to JavaScript, everything related to these open source projects. There's always some kind of error, some console error, it's often in JSON format. And we saw that when we went, made that JSON project last month, we could do that, what, it, what was it, like uh, social.url. And we used the URL stored in the object to open up the URL. Same concept here, error.message. So I've got, I know I've already got class 0. And I want to add uh, Spanish 102. Instructor Smith, save that. It's giving me still the same developer's messages here, but now on screen I'm showing this message to the user, which again, that doesn't make too much sense to the user. But any of this JSON data we can display on screen by referencing it. We could do the same thing with the with the positive result, because this has a field of OK, ID, and Rev. Not really too much interesting to display to the user, but just for fun, you don't have to do this, but if you wanted to do this, you could do result uh, I think this one is dot underscore rev confirm that Uh, not underscore rev, just rev. There we go. So a nice response to the user. Gibberish. <laughs> so we can have it display anything from that JSON object. Uh, we can do result.ok, which will just say true. So again, not very, not very useful user output, but uh, you see what I did there. Uh, result.rev. Well, the result is coming from that, and that can be called anything. It could be kitty, comma, cat, and this will still work. It could be <laughs> kitty.error or kitty.message. If this is called kitty, then it's kitty.message. Kitty cat. If that were cat, then that's cat.res. Whatever those things are called. I'm telling you that because as you look at the documentation or other tutorials, they're not always consistent with the same callback parameters. Uh, yes? The order which they come out, the error's got to be Yes, the specification does have it that way that the error is the first and the in the positive result is the second. Bad first, good second. That's how they designed the specification. Okay, let's do this now. Uh, as I'm saying that once we 
we add a positive, once we add data, I want to then clear these fields. Because if I don't clear these fields and I try to save it again, it's going to give me the error. I want to clear these fields. So we'll go back to our code in our non-error state. After that console log, line 41, we'll call clear fields function. <coughs> so on screen we're saying class save, console output, and clear the fields. There's no such thing as clear fields. So that means we will define a function that clears the fields. Let's go after our function of end classes. Let's go to a brand new line 48. We will invent our function, clear fields. So up at the top I'm saying we're going to invoke clear fields, and here I'm defining, um, what's it called officially, instantiating? Is that the right term? Uh, we're creating the clear fields function, and uh, I just want to put a comment there. This is the end of it. This is actually a really easy function. This will be a little bit of jQuery, uh, jQuery magic. Uh, we have a bit of jQuery built in to quickly clear a form. We've got a form up there with three fields. I want to clear those those uh, those fields. So first of all, we need to reference the that object up there. So this is our standard jQuery to reference something on screen. We have an ID. What do we call our form again? Uh, form class. So that'll be pound form class. Don't forget the pound sign. It's an ID. And we have some jQuery dot reset. That's it. Now we could have written simply this line back on line 41. This would have done the same thing clear the form as soon as you as soon as we save the data to the database but here we put it into a um, a function so we can simply call clear fields whenever we need it instead of typing this over and over or copying and pasting and making a mistake we can call this and since we put it into a function we can have more than one thing happen here also we can string together various commands <coughs> right now this is a very simple function that we made but the point of that is for reusability Let's see if this works. Save it and run it. Let's put something into the database. Something new. Save class. Class saved. And reset is not a function. On this one. Hmm. what I may be forgetting. No. Okay. Um, okay, uh, this is not jQuery, actually. It's plain old JavaScript. So then we don't use that. Okay, we have to write it the long form. I have to look it up. There is a jQuery version of it. I don't remember it off the top of my head. So, um, coming it, commenting out line 49, I'm writing it the long way. Right there. Document 
the get element by ID, foreign class, no pound sign there. So I'm trying to use J JavaScript on jQuery. I guess it's getting confused here. So here's jQuery, uh, here's JavaScript and JavaScript. So that seemed to work. We have to write it the long way. Now at this point, the um, the thing is that we we have we've created a database. We've saved data to a database. I want to retrieve data. I want to start that. We're getting to the end of the day, but I want to now. We have a button to show the data of the database on screen. I want to start that, and we'll continue it next time. I want to set up my structure to be able to click the button to show the classes. So next line here. We need to reference that other button that's up there. Um, <coughs> BTN show class. So same sort of syntax as we've seen before for the Save Class button. Now we're saying when you click the button of Show Class, run some function. We're going to define a function. This is for Show Classes. Show Classes. Show classes. This is a function that we're going to invent to show the classes. So on the next line, function show classes. We've got um, the way basically the pouch documentation lays it out is uh, we're going to get data from the database. We do have a db.get. db.get is basically designed to get one thing at a time out of the database. We don't want that. We want to get all the data out of the database to show it on screen. That's the point of this. Show me all the classes on screen. We could, of course, set it up to only show one class at a time. But I want to display all of the classes on screen. So we have db.alldocs. This is basically get all the docs, get all the data, get all the data uh, out of the database.
And so for the moment, just type uh, xxx there, comma, and then function callback like like above there, error comma results curly braces. That's the syntax of result, what do we call it? Result or results, just to be consistent, we call it result. Result. That doesn't matter. We're basically inventing it on the fly, basically. So that can be called anything, results, as long as we use results. So the thing about misspellings are that sometimes you can you, it, misspellings are fine as long as you use them consistently. Uh, so here, the syntax of this is give me all the documents out of this database with something here. And then the result will either be an error or a positive result. The something here are optional parameters, so options. And I do want to feed it a few optional parameters because uh, the data uh, we can by default all docs will I believe only give you the IDs of the data it'll only spit back to you all the IDs in your database mm -hmm. I want actually all the subfields of my classes and I want them in order of ascending alphabetical order on all the classes in alphabetical order so we're going to feed it a couple of parameters here. And the syntax for this is a little JSON string, a little JSON object. We're going to give it more than one option. So we have to put it in JSON format. We kind of saw that when we played a little bit with the camera back when last month when we were on the app and we created the camera button. Uh, we had told it, give it to us. Uh, how did we do? We said the data URL and all of that, remember? It was in a little it was in a little JSON object. So here we're going to say uh, include or actually in, in quotes here, because it's JSON, include underscore docs after the quote space colon space true. This is basically saying, give me all of the data of the document, whatever, everything that the document includes, all of the fields we created up there, give them all to me true. Not in quotes because it's a Boolean. Uh, so that's one option, comma, space, quotes. The second option is ascending. space colon. Uh, this one is ascending also true. Give it to me in ascending order, alphabetically, from A to Z, from 0 to 1. <coughs> from 0... What's that? Ascending by the ID field. Uh, I believe we can ascend it by the different fields, but the default for us that we need is just the ID. Okay, so I think here, just uh, to wrap up for the moment, um, this is going to be also extra stuff, so let's break this curly brace. So the end of this function call that curly braces, press enter to break it to its own line over here, just like we did up there. For the moment, we can do an if-else thing later, but for the moment, just to wrap up for the moment, uh, let's do console output result. We're going to assume a positive result. Yes, we should do if-else, because what if there's an error? Just to see what happens here, uh, console.log result. So we've got the ability to click on the button, run the function show classes. Oops, wait a minute. That should be show classes. If you typed exactly what I typed, this is not quite right, is it? 
we're saying run the function show classes, but for some reason I created a function called button show class. Sorry about that. We're trying to run function show classes, so you should have defined the function show classes. I should have defined a function show classes. Be careful there. If you may check it. So remember, highlight your code and it shows you your instances. So I'm trying to run show classes. I've defined show classes right here. I'm clicking on button show class to run show classes. And show classes is here. Give me all the data from my database. And for the moment, give me some result if it worked into the console. We're not there yet. We're running out of time. Next time, we'll actually display it nicely. But let's see what we get out of this. Open up your console, of course, because this is console output. Show classes, object, total rows, 13 rows of data. If I open this up and go in deeper, it shows all my objects. So the result of this button working, of me trying to pull the data out of the, da the database, is a JSON object of rows, offset and rows, and then within the data, within the actual object, I've got a field of offset, a field of rows, a field of total rows, proto, inside of rows, I have all of these other ones. There's the sequence in the index value, 0, 1, 2, in my case up to 12. My tenth object here was 999. My third one was 0ZZ, and I want to display that nice on screen, that'll be next time, because I need to take all that raw data and do something with it. <coughs> so if it worked, you get that result. I don't think we can force a... I don't think we can force a... I don't think we can force a negative result. Click that button, show class, all done. Oh, DB, yeah, we can force a negative one right here. DBZ. Give me the data in the database DBZ. There's no such data called DBZ, so that should force a result. But I didn't put anything into the console to give me that negative result. Classes uncover if ZBZ is not defined. Well, that's just a plain old JavaScript error. That's not a pouch error. But uh, if that worked, we're on our way. We need to take that raw data, do something with it. And this is what all of these uh, websites out there in the world do now. You can tap into the whole Internet Movie Database. You can tap into all of the pictures on Flickr. You can tap into Instagram. You can tap into all of these services. They have some sort of entry point, an API, and they will kick back to you data in JSON format 99% of the times now. And it'll kick back, you know, 5,000 rows of data. Now it's up to you to further write code to process that, which mm -hmm. is what we'll do next time. Process that, take that, make a table out of it, put it on screen, make rows, put colors, all of that. And we've got half of the puzzle so far, creating the database, adding to the database. Next we've got updating the database, displaying the database, all of that. Um, raise your hand if this worked. You saw some object in the console. Okay, good. I'm going to put my code in the folder now, my final version at this point. We're going to wrap up. Any general questions? Yes? Is there any setup that we need to do to use Couch and not hold yeah, the big thing is that you you do definitely read the documentation and you need some kind of server that has the ability for you to install packages, the CouchDB package, and it's all in the documentation there of how to install it. Uh, if you're running like a virtual server like MAMP, WAMP, ZAMP, you, you could do it that way too if you don't want to go out and get a real server on GoDaddy or Amazon, whatever. You could do it via these virtual servers. Yeah, this doesn't need anything at all. It's just got jQuery and the pouch file. That's it. Any other general questions?
All right, that's it for the moment. When we come back next time, we'll do something nice with this data.